Here's another linear programming example. In this case, we have a bike shop, Express Bike Shop, that offers custom bike kits. The standard kit requires 15 hours of shop time, 8 hours of painting time, and 1 hour of inspection time. The deluxe kit requires 12 hours of shop time, 12 hours of painting time, and 2 hours of inspection time. Including all the employees, the bike shop has 120 hours available for shop time, 72 hours available for painting, and 11 hours available for inspection. How many customizations of each type should Express Bike Shop perform each week if each standard kit results in a profit of $175 and the deluxe kits each result in a profit of $275? What is the maximum profit in this case? So we'll go through and do the all the steps of a linear programming problem one by one. The first step is always to identify the variables because everything that we do will use these variables. So we want to make sure we have clearly labeled what they are. We'll have two variables as always, x and y. And remember when we're trying to define variables, we need to look at the word problem and see what it is that we can control. What it is that we're asked to decide on. So we're asked to decide how many customizations of each type should they perform. So that's going to be our variables. How many customizations of each type. So x will call the number of standard kits, y the number of deluxe kits. And if we switch these around, it wouldn't be a problem as long as we were consistent through the rest of the problem. We just have to pick one to be the standard, one to be the deluxe. So, as always, when you look through the word problem, look for what you can control or what you're asked to decide on, and that'll be your variables. The second step is to find the objective function. And again, the objective function is what we're trying to maximize or minimize. Reading through this problem, we're told that we want to maximize profit. We're trying to find the maximum profit. So we want to find the maximum profit, and therefore we uh, try to define profit in terms of x and y. So you always want to define your objective function in terms of your variables x and y. Thinking this through, the total profit is how much profit they get from the standard kits plus the profit they get from the deluxe kits. And if they make x standard kits, total profit from standard kits is 175, the profit from each one, times the number they make. And then the profit from deluxe kits is the profit for each one times the number of those that they do. So that's the total profit. So usually your profit will be some sort of linear combination of x and y. So pay attention to how profit is described in the word problem and you'll be able to find the objective function. Once we have the objective function, we kind of set that aside until the end of the problem, and we go through and work on the constraints. And the constraints form most of the problem. First we have to find them, and then we have that system of inequalities that we graph, which we call the feasible region, and then we find the corners of the feasible region, and then finally we come back to the objective function. So most of the problem, we work on the constraints. Looking through this problem, we notice a couple of constraints. They're constrained by their shop time, and then we're told something about how much each kit requires of shop time. They're limited by their painting time and by their inspection time, the same way. So those are the three limitations. If you look here, we have three limitations. The shop time, the painting time, and the inspection time. Then there's this last implied but unstated limitation that X and Y both have to be greater than or equal to zero. You can't have anything negative. It's clear that that has to be true. So, if we write the constraints in terms of the variables, looking at the number of hours of shop time, if each standard kit takes 15 hours of shop time, then the total shop time required for standard kits is 15 times x. Similarly, each deluxe kit takes 12 hours of shop time, so 12 times the number of deluxe kits. Adding those together is our total shop time, and that total shop time has to be less than or equal to 120. And if you do the same thing for painting time and for inspection time, this is what you get, as well as the non-negative constraints that we mentioned that are implied but not stated. So these are the five constraints we have, the three that were stated in the problem and the two implied ones. And I've color-coded these so that when we draw the lines, we can keep track of which line corresponds to which inequality, which constraint. Now, once we have the constraints, we can graph the feasible region. And this is fully graphed, and I won't go through the details, but 
each of these were graphed using the intercepts. And again, the reason is that now once I graph these using the intercepts, I have, for instance, this point figured out for free based on the fact that I've used the intercepts to graph that line. So this blue line is the first constraint, and the green and red lines. Also, I've labeled these corner points, and those are the important points. Once we have the feasible region graphed, and I've shaded the right area of that, so if you need to review graphing inequalities, you can go back and do that, but I've shaded in the feasible region. And then the important part is to find these corner points. So these are already labeled, but the way that we can find them is either if we graph using intercepts, we know what these are, and then to find this one, for instance, I solve the system of equations of the blue and green equations. And then to solve this one here, I solve the system of the green and red equations. And I find these intersection points. So that process is laid out here, where we find each of these corner points. Thus, the five corner points are listed here. And our last step is to evaluate the objective function of the corners. Because remember, the fundamental theorem of linear programming says that the maximum and the minimum are going to occur at one of these corners. So going down here, we evaluate at each corner what the objective function is. So we list x and y for each of the corner points, and then plug those into the objective function that we found in the second step. Looking here, the minimum is 0, but that's not what we want. We want the maximum, which is 1625, which occurs when x is 3 and y is 4. So this is the optimal point. The shop, therefore, should make three standard kits and four deluxe kits. And if they do that, they'll make 1625 per week. And that's our conclusion. So that's all the steps of the linear programming problem.